Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. All sorts of things to cover in this one. Um, we're going to look at combine costs. We're going to look at what we're doing for 25 harvest and some of the environmental things. But I thought I'd kick off in the grain shed. So this is obviously where all the grain comes back as we do harvest. And now we're complete. I know how many tons we produced. 670 tons we ended up with. And that was the produce of 247 acres. And that is not a good yield. It is an average of 2.7 tonnes the acre. Sorry, it's not in hectares or tonnage in hectares, but I like to use acres. And that is around 12% less than our five-year average. That's sort of how you predict where your wheat is when you budget in. Five-year average is the accepted way. It seems I'm not alone. Everybody is down on their average yields across the farm. And I am absolutely not surprised when we look back at what this season has offered and that crazy rain from middle of October onwards, right through the winter, well, all the way through. And then in the critical grain field period, just no sun, cloudy, no you know, crazy rain, thank goodness, that had stopped, but we just didn't have that sunshine that does give bulk out the grains. So this is the pile I've got left. Ah, every farmer will know this, trying to get the last bit of wheat moved is always tricky. So I've moved 640 tonnes and there's about 25, 30 tonnes to go and this is it. It will go at some point. I thought I'd had a part load. What are the grain trade don't like when you sort of grow tons that don't fit the capacity of a lorry and lorries 28 29 tons and yeah it's always that bit when you've got about eight or ten tons left and you end up in a bit in the corner and put it in a trailer or something but yeah that that is harvest this year and I'm looking just the size of this year's harvest in the UK I think it's around 11 million ton figure way down on what we normally produce, 14, 15, up to 17 million tonnes. So I think it's one of the worst harvests in decades is that what I'm seeing about this year's harvest. Goodness knows what it's going to be next year with all the environmental schemes coming on board as well. But uh, yeah, the plus side, it is Dawson wheat. It's performed, it's very good spec weight. It's all been dry, bar that one load I shared last time, a four pound claim for 15.7 moisture. So very easy. Feed market likes it. It's a good sample. Of, no, I just showed you there's not a lot of trash in it. It's, it's reasonable grain. So nothing wrong at all with the sample, just not quite enough of it. The other thing I ought to say on that is this year, I, I, I shouldn't expect a good yield. We had 247 acres. Only 100 acres of that was what I termed first wheat, 50 acres second wheat, but I had 98 acres of third wheat on the farm this year because of this environmental thing. We didn't get um, notified that the stewardship was going to start. And you never grow third wheat unless you can help it because that will always, the yield drops as you go first, second and third. I think it stabilised around four and then starts to go up again. But um, yeah, third wheat, not good. Anyway, so that's the harvest. Let's just go and have a look at the combine. Well, the combine is back home. We've moved it back here the other day. And yeah, this 24 harvest was actually the seventh season we've done with this. It arrived in 2018 on this farm. And yeah, we've always used a contractor up to that point, but I just thought it was worth actually owning our own combine. And it's marginal, but I thought because you can control when you're combining, because the capacity of these sort of combines that are sort of reasonable value in the marketplace, when you look at the cost of a new combine, which is just horrific, I've given it a go and seven years in I sort of know whether it works or not so I thought I'd just run through some numbers. Yeah we had a service done on this beginning of the season I, because it's not doing very many hours engine hours is about 55 60 hours a year so nothing. I get it serviced every other year on the farm and this year's service was yeah, 4,543 pounds expensive because I actually replaced all the knives in the chopper it wasn't chopping very well and it, they all had a little dents on it and I could have sort of tried to actually sharpen them and angle grind and things but it was going to take a lot of metal off and whether it was still going to be balanced and things 
And I thought, you know what, I'm going to get a new set of knives. That will last a long time. So we did that. And the chop has been really good, actually, on it. The engine oil filters, that was all changed. Hasn't used a drop of oil all season. It's drunk a fair amount of diesel. And that's about it. Now, because I've had it, that's the seventh season with it. I know how much I've spent on servicing over those seven years, and it's £24,827, nearly £25,000 on servicing. Yeah, combines, they eat money. That's why you're careful whether it's actually worthwhile owning one, and rather than using a contractor. But a contractor charge is £52 at the moment to combine an acre with chop. This combine, since it's arrived, has done, we worked it out, 1,960 acres. If I paid a contractor to do that combining, I would have been in for about £101,000 contract charge for doing this. So suddenly the £24,827 service bill doesn't look quite as bad. There are other costs to consider, and they are... Well, obviously driver, Charlie on it, he, he doesn't do it for love. And uh, diesel uses about 3,000 litres, two and a half, three thousand. 3,000. So I'm going to put 2,000 pounds for diesel a season and 1,500 for Charlie because I'm feeling generous. Three and a half thousand pounds. Times that by seven and you've got another 24 and a half thousand pounds. Add that on to the cost of repairs and I'm at 50,000 pounds. For the combine but that's over seven years and also because we've had it service this year i won't have a service next year and if i look back at 2023 we spent precisely zero pounds on it there was no charge they didn't nothing we had a few knives put on but we had those in the toolbox so i'm hoping for another year like that although i have noticed one belt is getting a bit tired so i would put a thousand fifteen hundred pounds to get that chain so yeah that's the combine cost so if i'd actually paid out the contractor cash flow wise i would have spent out a hundred thousand pounds i've actually spent out fifty thousand but i by doing that sum i'm ignoring depreciation and there is bound to be depreciation as well but i haven't actually had to pay that out i only take that pill when i sell the machine but looking at the second hand price of this we've i paid eighty six and a half thousand for it in 2018 it's probably 66,000 now, so 20,000 depreciation. So I'm still around the 30,000 up on using a contractor. But the big plus is the fact that we've combined everything dry since it, it arrived. So we've never had, you know, we can go when we want, when it's fit and go and get it and not have to worry about having wet wheat in the shed. The other clever thing with this machine is it has a satellite tracking on it and it knows the yields. And I can now look back to where I got that yield from. And it's really fascinating to see that with these uh, maps that are different colours and you look around the fields. So what I'm going to do now, take you to one of those fields and just explain the map and then we can see it actually on the ground. Now we're in a field called Fuzz Ground, which is a great name. And this field had a real wet patch in it and basically didn't yield anything. I'm gonna see if we can sort of see the difference. It's around here. It's hard to tell, because it's all sort of stubble. And you think, oh, it looks fairly normal when you look out the window, but it's not. Now, oh, here we go. Now, this was the wet patch. I'm just, I can see the ruts here. Let's just, let's just step outside and have a look. So if I look in this direction, it all looks fairly good. You can sort of see the rows of wheat, the stubble, all looks fairly normal. And I can look at the yield map and I can see on that so that it's a green colour and this bit did yield fairly normally all here. But if I come round to just where I've stopped the car and suddenly it's all changed. And you can see just how wet this was. So you can see the tractor's made ruts in it and suddenly I've lost the rows of wheat. So I've just got a bit of weed here, nothing. And that's what I love about these yield maps because I can see the gradient from looking at all the colours where these patches are. And this is this field this year is in this enhanced stubble. So we are not 
doing anything with this field, I think until about May time. And you can then, it will grow up, it will grow up a bit of, um, all this will come up, all these weeds and things will come up and just green up. And then I can then spray it off in May and start my prep for next year, putting it into wheat to harvest in 2026. But these yield maps are such a great management tool, and especially on these third weeks and finding out where the wet areas are and seeing the effect of how the wheat's grown. And what you want is consistent right across the field. And there was one field, it's called Big Picket, and it's one we did over there, and it looked good all year. And you can see that on the yield map, it's consistent green right the way across. And it's probably our best yielding field. And we had one or two at the other farm, and that direct drill area unfortunately we had rabbit damage so it was hard to tell which was the best yield in field because it, it was not consistent that is the story of 24 harvest it's all over the place you cannot predict which fields were going to be your best field or not it was all on soil type how they cope with that deluge of rain and it didn't almost matter if it was a first or second week. It was all about this, the soil condition and how it coped with ridiculous amounts of rain. So yeah, that's, that's the, how this yield map. And I just love that about that combine as a management tool. It keeps the interest fascinating as you're going along and just watching the yield bounce up and down and which bits are good. And what you want is the whole field to be good. But unfortunately, Mother Nature doesn't always allow that like that's what happened in the 2024 harvest. Now, I've got a tractor over there because I'm meant to be doing a job at the moment and I'm not doing it. And I'll explain why next. Stan, come this way, come this way. Right, this little bit, we're still in fuzz ground, but this was the other area that didn't grow anything. And again, it flooded out, always floods at the far end of this field. And in really bad season, it floods this side, just in that dip as well. And I decided to put this into something called AB8. And that's what I should be doing today. That's the job. And this is what I do it with. There's a slight issue that there's a breeze blowing. And this is very fine seed. AB8 is a grass margin with wildflowers in it so how I do it is I have a spinner on the front of the tractor there which I have the seed in and then I don't drill it we use the cultivator here carrier Badestad carrier and have the lightest disking then these rollers just sort of pack it down again and it just gives it a bit of soil contact that's all I'm after with it and you don't really need to have to drill it or anything, but because I'm spinning it out, we'll have a look at the seed actually, that would sort of explain it. And it's just really light and, you, and it, once it's windy, you can't guarantee you get full spreading width. This machine has also been really busy because what we do is straight after the combine, the bits we are growing wheat in again, you've got to remember that half the farm is in enhanced stubble and the other half we are growing wheat in, that half, I just give this a light disking and that's just to get any weeds germinating just again just to get that soil contact going and I find it fascinating when you look around the, all these arable fields you can see these dead straight lines it looks like a zebra crossing everywhere it's so uniform or a striped lawn or something and that's all to do because the, all tractors majority of tractors now have guidance on them and they are absolutely dead right and within two or three centimeters you go across the field tracking across and the tractor's steering it rather than tractor drivers and we always used to have a bit of a wobble on it was always trying to keep it straight but let's have a look at the seed this is, these are the bags this is a half bag it's it it goes on at a rate of 20 kilos a hectare and the cost of this seed is about 12 pounds a kilo so yeah 240 pounds a hectare seed cost which is expensive <laughs> this will last a few years right now we're in and that basically you can see is the mix that is grass and you can see that will just i just try and spin that well that isn't going to spin full width and it's got you know it's quite expensive seeds you can see there's some 
wildflowers so you're not quite sure what they are but you can see different seeds but i need dead still conditions to be able to do it it won't spread it very wide but i want a consistent width so it's not blowing all over the place so that's my next job on the farm pushing that in and that is about 1.8 hectares of this corner taking out this area that always floods it's pointless growing, trying to grow wheat on it i'll have a grass margin on there a few wildflowers keep your wildlife happy and there you go so there's an update on what's happening on harry's farm i the next one will probably be later in the month and then we'll be just getting ready for putting the wheat in and i'll explain a bit more what we're going to do how we're going to justify the machinery with half the acres does it actually work as a business that's for next time so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did keep watching keep subscribing more videos coming along very soon <laughs>